Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel Kalanadi. Today I am going to review The Sea in Summer by George Turner. This is a science fiction novel that was published in 1987 and it won the second Clark Award. I had never heard of this book or of George Turner before until I started reading the Clark Award list and I'm really glad that I read it and discovered it. I enjoyed it a lot and I would really like to read more by George Turner. Um, apparently he was an Australian author who came to writing science fiction rather late in life and The Sea in Summer, his uh, probably most well-known work, is set in Australia near Melbourne. The Sea in Summer sets out to tell a very human story about climate change, the increasing divide between the rich and the poor, and global collapse in the 21st century. The book has two time periods, the autumn people and the sea and summer. The autumn people is set in the far future at the beginning of an ice age caused by climate change. An actor visits a professor who is an expert in in the greenhouse culture of the 21st century in order to research uh, what life was like for people back then and who lived in these massive towers on the Australian coastline near where they are. He wants to dramatize the lives of people at that time and, and write a play about them. So the professor gives him an unpublished novel she's written, which is a fictional account of some real people who lived in that area during the 21st century. The Sea and Summer chapters, which make up the bulk of the book, are that novel within a novel. Now, the 21st century of this book is characterized by a very sharp divide between the rich and the poor. The sweet are the rich, the privileged, and the rapidly diminishing middle class. The swill are the poor, the remaining 90% of the population that are sent to live in these slum towers on the coastlines. The story begins in 2041 when the Conway family is demoted from sweet to swill because the husband loses his job. He commits suicide, leaving his wife and two sons to move to a fringe neighborhood, which is kind of like this artificial buffer between the swill neighborhoods and the sweet, so that the fallen sweet can perhaps feel better about themselves. They're not actually swill, but in reality they are. The family is welcomed to the neighborhood by the local tower boss named Billy Kovacs, who scares the crap out of them and makes them pay protection money. He is actually trying to help them and he becomes very involved with the family and very close to them um, over the years. And throughout the course of the book you follow these people through their lives, set against the backdrop of climate change and the social consequences of that. This is a mosaic novel, or what's also called a tapestry novel, where each character tells their own story but also appears in everybody else's stories. So you really get this look at what every person thinks about themselves, but then how everyone else sees them from the outside and interprets what they're doing. I really loved how smoothly this story flowed from character to character and through the years. It's really quite a complex structure that was carried off beautifully, I think. Interestingly though, unlike other mosaic novels that I've read, I'd be really hard pressed to pick out what I thought was maybe a focal character or a primary story because they're all woven together into one big story so well. All the parts are balanced. So for example, in the first third, I thought the point was Francis's story. And then the next third, I thought, wait, it's his brother, Teddy. And then by the end of the book, I wondered, is the whole thing a character study of Billy Kovacs and what kind of man he is? Or it could be all of these things all at once because it is done so well. There is one topic that I think this book is about, and surprisingly it's not directly climate change. I mean, yes, the, the book is saying pay attention to climate change, it is written as a warning, it's a didactic novel, but there's more to it than that. I think that Turner is kind of coming at this issue from the side, exploring more um, what the characters experience as the social consequences of climate change. 
So initially the book sets up this very stark contrast between sweet and swill. You have this black and white dichotomy, but then it starts to break down that simplistic outlook and explores the, the in-betweens, the alternatives. And so I felt that the issue that all the characters actually grapple with is the mental sweet swill divide. It's that insidious idea that the poor are dirty, wretched, and criminal, that they are useless, that they are a mass rather than individuals, and that they're reduced to this animal concept instead of being human beings by the people who don't know them and yet judge them. The characters who have fallen from sweet grace have to really grapple with this attitude of theirs, of what they were taught about the swill, and they have to have this attitude chipped away at over years and, and learn that they were wrong about the world, they were misled by propaganda and censorship. And yes, I think the point of the book is a warning about climate change. It's saying recognize the attitudes and the problems, the unsustainable ways of living that lead to breakdowns like this, to runaway catastrophes like climate change. The characters show how hard it is to recognize the warning signs, the problems in your own lifetime. When you're living through something, it just feels normal, and perhaps it is only easier to see what went wrong in retrospect. But I think Turner wrote this book in response to problems that he already saw in the 1980s, which are still glaringly obvious in the 21st century, and we still haven't done anything about. He may turn out to be right, for all I know. Anyway, all of this is to say that I thought it was fascinating and fantastic. I thought this was an incredibly effective and moving way to tell a human story, to bring light to history or to the future. I would highly recommend it. Um, if you have read this book and you want to talk about it, please leave me a comment down below. If you've read any of Turner's other books that you would recommend I pick up, please also let me know that. I don't know how many of his other works might still be in print, but I will be looking for some of them. Thank you so much for watching this review, and I'll be back to talk to you again later, and until then, bye!